sound that, isn't it? Cicada, maybe? That's not a cricket. Cricket's got... It's a very vocal cicada. It's like a Brexit one. So, yeah. Tell me about the impact Brexit has had on this album. Oh, man. It's not actually referenced on this, is it? It's not. Not much. A second referendum? The album is actually called... Oh, yeah, it's called that. <laughs> But it's not in any other way referenced. <laughs> so in any other way other than Actually, the title of the album. it is in the song, the 2020 song, isn't it? Because I'm like, the second referendum's come around and all the bad guys live in That's town. right, yeah. Yeah, it's just the setting, isn't it? The content. Oh, he's piped down now. He's flown over there. I don't care about Brexit anymore. And I'd have done this album if it was the last day of my life. There's more dietary restrictions, weren't there? I had uh, IBS in the days right up to it, so... I was going to m and and getting their only gluten-free sandwich, which is, which is a um, fiery peri-peri chicken wrap gluten-free. Had that on the morning of this album. <laughs> so, a year ago, this album was called The Second Referendum. Yeah. What made you ditch that title, and what does the second wave mean to you? Mm. Well, now I'm in the midst of a successful porn career. I, uh, <laughs> things have changed. No, I, uh, I've had a lot of doubt and indecision. And it's taken so long to finish, it's taken six months longer than it was going to to finish it so I just had a lot of doubt about the second referendum name it was a good name for an album in October 2019 when we finished recording it yeah I thought second wave because it's like the second new wave if you know what I mean so it's 80s and also we're going like that on the cover of the first album the Can't Get Rested so it's like the second time we're waving even though we're not waving and we're also you can tell I've thought about this a lot we're also socially distanced on the cover I'm still undecided, but I've submitted it, so it's all right. You know, I had this idea when I stayed in that hotel on my own to do this album that sounds like it's been made in the summer of 1982 or three. You know, in the Power Station in New York, Cindy Lauper, Born in the USA, Reckless, all that stuff. So it was a, you know, it was a straight concept. It did end up like that, I think. It's hard to get people to go along with these mad concepts sometimes. But it's what I wanted to do. I thought it was a good idea. I still think it's a good idea. Because I can't just do, like, folk albums, or oh, my ex-girlfriend, or whatever. It's, you know, because I'm late 30s now. So I can't do that my whole life. Steve, can you tell me about your review of that drink you just had? Are you had? doing video? Yep. It's fine. That should be the, the cover, just that. Like, the real thing. Fine. Has the album taken on different meaning now from when you recorded it? No, it's like I've said, I'm a visionary, I'm a Nostradamus here. I was doing the Danger Zone thing before it was a Danger Zone in the world. No, the album, most importantly to me, has an 80s sound and it's an attempt to be fun, but it hasn't ended up very fun. It's kind of defiant, the way it sounds now, because I was struggling, really. I was stressed. Early day review? Mind the lyrics to this one. <clears throat> okay. How are you feeling about everything so far? Do you want me to be honest? Yep. It's going, it's, it's, it's more challenging, but it might be more rewarding in the end, eh? Wait, see, it's a bit tired, but it's going to be alright. Maybe I should eat some gluten? It's defiant, but really it's covered in love with the Monk song, the My Favourite Guy song, and um, those sentiments. And I like the session we did, Me, You and Savannah, with a drum machine. Not because the band were annoying or anything, but it brought another side to it out. And I like that side. I like the soft, kind of... Um, emotional part of this album because if I just did um, like a rock and roll joke album cartwheeling around you know um, trying to be Huey Lewis it's a bit one dimensional so I like the emotional bit so that wasn't planned the whole my favorite guy back in the limo um, Lucy bit it was added but also you know the songs like um, Boys of Summer and uh, I want to know what love is and the ballady songs from the 80s. Well, even Born in the USA has 
I'm on fire, my hometown, so I wanted different textures. It needed that because you can't just stick the My Favourite Guy song in there and it's an emotional bomb, so you can't really have that and then go back to jumping around like James Brown. So, um, yeah, it's got a different texture, which I quite like, yeah. And it gives you the opportunity to explore other types of 80s songs rather than just the Tom Petty, Bruce, Huey Lewis ones. It's kind of, you know, you can go into the other areas of the top 40. Not craft work. The whole point is like, I want to go back to when people were having a good time. So like, for me, when I wrote this album, it was like, what was getting me out of bed in the morning on like days in England where the sun doesn't come up was like, listening to this playlist that I had of 80s songs that reminded me of New York City, like films like Big or, I don't know. Films that are based in New York City that are fun and youthful. You know, that so uh, Wall Street and stuff, just stuff that reminded me of a certain time and a sax solo, you know, and Tom Hanks coming out of the, the roof of a limo. I was what he's doing, 80s stuff. Um, but I was there, I was a child, but I was there and I remember some of it, so it's an enchanting memory for me, it's like an innocent memory, so I wanted to do it because it feels fun and it's very different. 80s music was shit for years. People were like, oh my god, this sounds terrible. And now it kind of sounds alright, some of it. But only some of it. A lot of it's still crap. My favourite track on the album is actually Evelina. Because it does everything I want it to do. It's got a bit of 80s, it's got a like, that I want to know what love is thing. It's actually a good song, I think, with a good melody that could have been in one of our songs and stuff. And it's funny. So it's what I've been trying to do. That was the intention going in, was like Evelina. It was funny lyrics that are topical and are more than just a nice melody and a nice song. It was actually, oh, right, we used to sing about the toilet code and stuff. So, I like that. And I've never done a really slow, brooding, like, five-minute song with just, like, three or four chords in it. I was trying to do I Want to Know What Love Is about a barista who worked in Costa. A lot of people don't understand it, though. There's loads of bands, you know, Ray Davies, Squeeze, all these people who've got writing in the comic. British people are, are, are always trying to be so funny. And so it doesn't make sense that when they do music, they're suddenly like slitting their wrists, trying to be like Lana Del Rey or whatever. Everything's like doom stricken. Because that's not how we are when we talk to people, you know. So, um, there's got to be comedy. I like it anyway. It's who I really am as well. Kind of my real character. You know what I mean? Check out the new album, Second Referendum. Do it now. <laughs> it's gonna be funny. <laughs> oh, my mom, my you changed the name of Syria, tell me about that. You saw the new in Syria. Well, I had like an outrage of person who big started filming us, which is pissed, thinking that it was gonna be something where I should be like cancelled or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Which is a sign that the sign of times we're in. She heard something drunk and she thought, right, I'm gonna make a judgment here. I'm gonna try and destroy these people who are playing free music in a bar. It sounds amazing. And so the song's not actually about Syria and I have no strong opinions about Syria or politics or try to preach anything. All it's saying is that you don't have perspective if you're worrying about how you look in your Instagram or whatever. Some people don't even have a roof over their head. So that's the, that's the, I changed the title because I didn't want anyone to think I'm singing a song about the situation in Syria or taking the piss out of it, you know. So, um, this, the line, yeah, I didn't want to get confused, so the line is basically saying that you could be in this situation, you know, and it's kind of, it is a fun song, so I didn't want to have that mistake, and the lose your phone thing is more of a saying that fits my whole theme of the album, which is like, let's, why don't we, you know, get off these fucking things for just five minutes and remember what works for our minds. Do you have any thoughts about the fact that, because you make a lot of jokes that are, some might consider close to the line, do you have any thoughts about how that's perceived in public and well, how that's it makes That's where it the humour is, isn't it? That's where the humour is in the, uh, in the close to the line. Give me a smile, baby. Why angry face? <laughs> well, uh, what you're saying is very demeaning. Do you know the word demeaning? No. 
We are saying to you I could not concentrate on what this old man was saying. Your sex spray, gentlemen. <gasps> I've got it! Fantastic! Give me mine! Let's go! Uh, I mean, well, well done, Doctor. I'm not a doctor. Shut up. <laughs> we are men of science. <laughs> That's why we're in a dodgy time with comedy as well. Because... You know, you have to be spontaneous. I'm quite spontaneous. And, like, I don't know, it just makes me... With these milkshake songs, if it makes me laugh, the first tight uh, line, it kind of keeps me interested. When you approach weights, you don't approach it with a sensitivity. You approach it with a warlike attitude, and we're going to do war with the weights. You ready? Begin. Well, this band, with the Milkshakes, Mill Island Band, is fairly undiscovered. It's an unbelievable band of players. So if there was gigs, I, I've got myself to a very high standard because the songs have been cut to a very high standard, sound great, and um, the band is really good live players, and we all listen to the same sort of music, and we all are experienced guys in our 30s that have been playing for 10 years. So um, what's undiscovered is just the act, because we're a good act, and we can get people dancing and stuff. So Greg's a really like dedicated, versatile guy. Like he came up with some really good '80s riffs on this album. That you know, it's not his usual wheelhouse. Um, He's the blue collar vegan fireman. He loves dogs. He's a good guitarist and easygoing guy. Something about John. Fun guy. A lot of similar influences. Um, similar humour. Similar upbringing. Great bass player. Great musician. Oh, I'll do an Irish goodbye. So I'll have a half of it. Sorry. Yeah. Ash is an amazing job. He's done three albums of us in the space of a year, so that includes your one. Four in the space of two years. But yeah, he's an amazing guy. Best drummer on earth, as far as I'm concerned. Savannah is a really um, great lady easygoing person, confident, happy, expressive. And uh, yeah, you're playing synth on a lot of it. You helped me with the 80s. You brought the 80s in. Even on the cover, you are dress 80s, right? So, <laughs> best ever. What'd you have for breakfast? Um, coffee. How'd you prefer, how'd you prepare for singing? Uh, coffee. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I'm just trying to listen to this. Okay. Yeah. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye. So Mark's an amazing musician, one of the best I've ever played with, I'd say. I know he's probably got loads of ideas, and 80s probably wasn't at the foremost of his, like, stylistic intentions, but did great on this album because, you know, he's got some synth sounds going on, which is, you know, still just keys playing. But, yeah, we call him 15 Fingers for a reason, right? He's an amazing musician, you know, he's done both these albums in like three hours and uh, had two cans of Guinness and like, he's a good guy. Amazing musician as well, because I, I, don't, I, I don't have any reference for sax. You know, I'm like, can you just do it like um, Clarence Clements or um, Bobby Keys? I don't know much about it, so... But yeah, I mean, he's got some real showcase moments. Like, I had a lot of feedback from the rock and roll song video. Everyone's just going on about the sax solo, and I'm like, yeah, it is fucking good. He's on a song here, back in the limo, which is different. It's not like a cartwheely kind of rock and roll song, so it's good to get that. It's a big pressure when you're fronting an eight-piece band, and you know uh, the world's not doing very well. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's, you're swimming against the tide quite a lot in trying to do this rock and roll music. But I might have a different view in a year's time. Hopefully, I will. So I don't necessarily want to play it, but I just want to get it done and. 
we've got other stuff we want to do and then next summer maybe we'll do another <clears throat> project. I want the spotlight off Steve. <laughs> Soon as possible, get a pint. <laughs> Although I am great. You owe me if you know me. That's my next album title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a right serious bastard. You're definitely not. <laughs> Ash. <laughs>